It's hard to believe, but the Honda Civic has been around for 50 years, five entire decades. In that time, it sold more than 27.5 million units and has established itself as an enduring favorite of the people. It's showing absolutely no signs of slowing down either, because in 2022, Honda is all set to release a new 11th generation model. And here it is, the brand new Honda Civic. Now, I know some of our American and Australian audience will already have seen this car, but it is brand new to Europe and it comes with a new powertrain that you guys might not have seen before. So I figured I'd show you all around. And for this one, Honda say they've improved the looks, the efficiency and the technology, specifically the efficiency, because for the first time ever, the Civic will come only as a hybrid. That's right, Honda has long promised to electrify the entirety of its mainstream fleet in Europe by the end of 2022. The Jazz is a hybrid, the CRV is a hybrid, the HRV is a hybrid, and the Honda E runs only on batteries. Electrification is now a way of life for Honda. I'll show you more about the hybrid powertrain in just a second. First of all, I want to focus on design. Now, I always have a bit of a funny relationship with Honda Civics. For me, I can never really figure out instantly whether I like them or not. And I'm still on my journey of discovery with the new Civic. Maybe by the end of this video, I'll give you my exact thoughts. But what I can say is that it's a lot cleaner and simpler than previous generation models. Civics are notorious for having loads of extra fake vents and superfluous bits dotted all around. But for this new model, it's a lot cleaner. To my eyes, this lower grill looks a bit larger and simpler. This upper grill, instead of being two separate grills as it was on the previous car, is now a single piece with a kind of honeycomb structure going on in the middle. And it all looks a bit less fussier than before. It's also got new headlights. This is the top model and it comes with adaptive matrix LED lights, which means that it can cast a full bright beam on the road ahead without dazzling other road users. And it has a distinctive DRL pattern. Lower level models come with ordinary LEDs, but on the whole, I think the front is, well, I'll tell you later. Along the side, they've tried to give it a sporty silhouette. They would say that, wouldn't they? Every single manufacturer says their car has a sporty silhouette, but Honda have done that by lowering the bonnet by 35 millimeters and also pushing back the A-pillar, that's this bit, ever so slightly in order to make it look a bit more kind of dynamic and purposeful. I'll let you be the judge of whether it is actually sporty, but they've done some clever work. There's lots of detail that I find quite interesting actually. By moving the A-pillar back, it gives you a slightly wider field of view. Apparently, 87% field of view versus 84% on the previous generation car. They've also moved the position of the side mirrors. On the previous car, it was located on the corner of the door just up here. But for this new car, it's been dropped down onto the door body itself, which means there's a little bit more visibility going on just between the window and the wing mirror. Another detail I want to show you actually are the window wipers, which don't have separate nozzles for spraying the windshield. Instead, they're integrated directly onto the blades themselves. So rather than wasting water by slopping it everywhere all over the screen, it drenches the windscreen, which apparently reduces waste by 40%. Elsewhere, you might have noticed this car comes with Michelin Pilot Sport 4 rubber, which is really sticky tires, which gives you an idea of how much fun they intend this car to be in the corners. You get 18 inch wheels, a standard, either silver, black or gunmetal, as is the case on this top model. And then in profile, they've stretched the wheelbase and the rear track. So the distance between the rear wheels is wider and the distance between the front and rear wheel is also wider, which should help in terms of the amount of space you get in the back, but also in terms of the stability that you get around the corners. Another little change I wanna show you is this back end. Just here, they've got a little window, which didn't exist on the Mark 10. It's not massive when you're inside, it's actually tiny, but it should help reduce that feeling of claustrophobia. One thing I wanna check though, because they've moved this A-pillar back, I think, yeah, this door entrance is a little bit smaller than on the previous generation car. So watch this. It means that you kind of 
bang your head on the A-pillar as you try and get in. You have to literally duck under it to get in and out of the car. But it's no real hardship, is it? The back end of the car, surprise, surprise, is also much cleaner and much simpler than on the 10th generation Civic. For example, the old car had loads of spoilers, spoiler up here, spoiler there, spoilers jutting off in every direction, but this is much more simple and fuss-free. Also on the old car, where you had these big 3D effect lights, they've been replaced by much more simplistic, grown-up lights at the back of the car. You also have these fake vents on the old car, but here they've been replaced by just a little reflective strip down here. There is a small element of fakery down here, which is where you'd expect the exhaust pipes to be, but the exhaust on this car is tucked away right underneath the car. A couple of highlights that Honda are keen for people to know about. They've got a new laser welding technique, which allows them to more tightly integrate the roof and the side of the car. On the previous gen car, you had a little plastic strip, which looked a bit unsightly, but with their new laser welding technique, they've been able to more tightly integrate the roof and the side of the vehicle to make it look much cleaner and also allow the air to flow in an uninterrupted fashion. They've also hidden the hinge of the boot lid underneath. Let me show you. So on the previous car, the hinge was located on the top, bizarrely, bad for airflow. But in this, the hinge is more sensibly tucked away where nobody can see it. You've also got a single piece of plastic which runs the full width of the boot lid, which is really lightweight and helps to save around 20% of weight. So opening and closing the boot lid should be a lot easier if you're feeble. You've also got around 400 liters of storage, nice, big, wide storage space, and this odd little parcel shelf for some reason, which I don't think you really need because up here, you've also got a second shelf of sorts, which helps to hide away your valuables. But yeah, on the whole, nice, clean, simple, fuss-free, grown up. I like it. Just wanna show you the back of the new Honda Civic. There's tons of space back here. As I said earlier, they extended the wheelbase by 35 millimeters, and that means that you get so much leg room. This front seat is adjusted for me, and there's so much room for my knees, it's unbelievable. The only problem is you've got a lot less headroom. Look at this. I mean, I'm 5'11", if, if I sit bolt upright, my head is pretty much touching the top of the roof. And also, just here, my head is touching the side of the roof as well. And it's, I mean, it's less than ideal, isn't it? If you're kind of over six foot, this is not gonna be a great place to sit. But you can, of course, just slouch if you want to. Apart from that, you've got a little fold down section which doubles as an armrest with a couple of cup holders. You've got plenty of Isofix points back here, a little bit of room behind the seats to stash your iPads and other gadgets that your kids might have, a couple of USB ports, dedicated vents for the rear. Yeah, it's okay back here, unless you're tall. They've also made some really, really strong improvements when it comes to the front of the cabin. If you look at the previous generation car, it almost looked like what somebody in the 80s might imagine a car from the future to look like. It was a bit sort of busy and like it was designed maybe by a child, but this one is a lot more contemporary, a little bit retro, but also like it will last a lot longer and stand the test of time. I really like this horizontal section across the dash, which makes it look and feel a lot more spacious. Plus you've got this honeycomb pattern going on, which almost mimics the pattern in the grill at the front of the car. You've also got these quite interesting joysticks to control the direction of the vents. And I do love the fact that it's got three separate knobs to control your heating, ventilation, and climate control. And they're so easy to use as well. You just make sure the ignition's on, and then that central one is for controlling the vents. The one on the right is for your passenger side heating, and the one on the left is for the heating for the driver. Plus you've got your AC button. Shh. You've also got your heated seats button, and all of it is an absolute no-brainer to use. Love that. It's also got some really simple buttons for choosing what gear you're in. Basically, you've got your parking, your reverse, your neutral, and your drive. I said be quiet. Plus your drive mode selector down here on the center console. So you can choose between EV mode, hybrid mode, engine mode, or sports mode. And then two screens. So the one in front of the driver, you have a choice, either nine inch or 10.2 inch. And all of that is really clear. The resolution's pretty decent. And it gives you every piece of information that you might need whenever you're making your way down a road. As for the infotainment screen, 
Well, there is no choice of size available for this one. You get nine inches or nothing, but to be honest, it's kind of big enough and the whole thing is fairly easy to use as well. I mean, you've got your navigation, your phone and your radio source just below that in shortcuts at the bottom of the screen. And it's actually fairly responsive as well. I'll fire up the map and try and prove my point. But look at that. I mean, it's nice and nippy. It's got a faster processor than the previous generation Honda Civics. So it's nice and responsive. Plus, it's also got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and the CarPlay is wireless. And I actually just want to demonstrate um, how easy it is to use, so just bear with me. I haven't done this yet, but I'm literally going to pair my phone, which is sitting in a wireless charging mat, by the way. I'll quickly pair my phone, and then we'll see live how easy it is to hook up Apple CarPlay. So I'll go into settings, put a little timer on the screen as well, maybe. Um, Bluetooth is on. Search for new device. OK. Rory, connecting, little message on my phone, hopefully. Yep, pair, allow. So far, so good. Connecting, and there you go, boom. Apple CarPlay in the Honda Civic, wirelessly, no cables, no faffing, your phone's charging down here in the dock and it's all good in the hood. Let's talk quickly about your practicality in this car. A couple of cup holders, decent storage in these bins. The door bins are large enough. The materials, you've got some fake leather going on here, but it feels quite decent. A little bit of piano black across here, but you're never gonna touch that, so I doubt it'll get too messy. On the whole, yeah, quite like this. So earlier I promised I'd tell you about the powertrain and I never break a promise, so here goes. It uses a two litre four cylinder Atkinson cycle engine mounted up front alongside not one, but two electric motors. One of which drives the front wheels and the other works as a kind of generator to allow the engine to generate electricity and send it back into a small battery pack. Now, it doesn't blow your pants off in terms of performance, but expect around 184 metric horsepower and 315 newton meters of torque. So the new Civic, I think the looks are growing on me. Pricing is unconfirmed as yet, but I have very little doubt it will be a brilliant car when it's released later this year. How good? We'll have to wait and see. Would I buy one? Well, I'll reserve judgment until we see the Type R. Watch this space.